market outlook and it is October 2nd after we had a big downdraft yesterday massive moves um, nice little recovery day in crude oil so let's take a look across the markets first I want to go to our hourly chart so let's pull this bad boy over yeah good morning everybody uh, here is the S&P 500. Let's walk through the hourlies. Uh, we did our analysis based on Fibonacci sequence levels. We use retracements and extensions. So the Fibonacci retracement, we said to sell them at 77, 78 in the S&P. Targeting this level right there, there's a quick little 15 to 18 point winner. If price breaks below support at 56, then where is it likely headed? We did our projections at the 127 FIB extension, the last leg down, 1947s. The market came and one, two, three hours held. And then we broke. We said if it breaks below that, then where is it likely headed? 1934, the 1618 Fibonacci extension. Yesterday's low is right around 33. We've put in a symmetrical double bottom at this level. Here's a great example, gang, uh, on a technical basis where we can crop the wicks You'll note right here that although this guy traded well below the 37, we came down right here to 33.50s. We firmed back up, so right now 37 showing some significance. We've got no DSR level to speak of right here. Uh, so S&P popped, resistance, resistance, resistance held. We drove through intra-bar on this candle. This is the uh, 8 a.m. candle that will close at 9, and you see we're right back down into yesterday's closes. So the 127, 1618, both shows relevance uh, yesterday. Fibs at work, 618 at structure with that big mo. Turning point, black tip sell, bada bing, bada beautiful. Now again, when we're selling with the trend like we saw right here, scalping contract targets or your first half of a position targets back to the DSR level. Then we always say if... We break the DSR support level, then where are we headed? Again, it's a conditional statement. If this, then that. If this, then that. So right here, if this, then where are we headed? Boom. So give it a 1948. So that's 30 points from the short entries up here. 28 points. Beautiful directional move. Now, we'll see what happens down here, this 1934. If I get buy signals here... We'll look to buy that. We bought some SPY calls and Q, or QQQ calls as well. We'll update those here in a second. All right, let's go NASDAQ. NASDAQ trade rolled over. There was our big bad ratio trade sell signal. Again, we had uh, Dave's analysis showed us our high to high trend line extension. We had a one to one measured move that terminated right at that key price point from this swing high to this new structure low 786 retracement I took the swing low here inverted it that's the 127 extension and again turning point black tip so from the 40 50 or 60 cell again targeting the 4,000 okay we looked for buy signals here we bought the 4,000 intraday profited on a day trade and then once we broke below, closed below, you see that we rolled right down here, our lows at 39.65. All right, so let's pull in our 1414 FIB extension right here. If we break through our current support levels, then uh, we're likely to head down to that 39.40 handle. Okay, so 39.60 right here. We drove through that 127, but then you can see that we firmed up. So again, the wick drove through, but all of the other closes closed right at the 127 FIB extension. Now, interesting level right here on the NASDAQ. We bought this yesterday in the afternoon trade. My bid zone 2 held the lows of the day. Remember, we talked about bid zone 2 buying that level on the first test. This week, bid zone 2 trades are 5 winners, 2 losers. But there was a great example here. This was 130% of the average true range. It was my bid zone 2 level for the day in the NASI. Okay, we were at a 1414 FIB extension higher time frame. All of that came together. Long entries at 3966. Popped back up. 
and you can see we've been as high as 39.95 and now we're trading right around that 78 handle so if we get back down that'll be yesterday's lows we'll see if we get another long entry at that zone bid zone two intraday All right, let's go back over here. Let's take a look. Uh, Dow traders. Dow Jones, same obviously uh, visual. We took out our DSR levels. And again, take a look at it, gang. We had DSR level. There was a long entry here. And again, there's the qualifier. We had RSI oversold. We had the black tip. There was the sell signal right there, about 1750s. Rolled back over. There's a $100 uh, or 100-point winner. And then again, let's come in here. Here's the swing high that preceded the decline to that new structure low. 127 extension at 760s, 1618 at 650s. Lowest lows yesterday came in at 686, so 690s basically. Now we'll take the last leg of this move lower. Swing high, new structure low. And you'll note a point of confluence. So I'm going to pull in the 382 just to show you that that 382 is likely to be at or near this uh, DSR level. So you can see our 382 Fib retracement around 830. So a rally back into this 850, 860 area, we'd look for potential sell signals with the underlying trend. Okay, so Dow Jones right now testing the absolute lows, 16.7. Again, if we break below, close below, we got plenty of room to run. Now, you can see right here, this proceeded to drive to here. We've only been able to rally here, not even to the 23% Fib retracement. That's a sign of weakness. When we can't even get the buyers to step in, bid this back up to the 382 retracement, sign of weakness. If this move duplicates itself, in other words, we get the AB shallow BC, and then where would AB equal CD? That's down to 16.4. A lot of pressure right here again as we're rolling right back down to that 690 handle. Yeah, we'll do some projections here in a bit. All right, let's go TF. Off the cliff. Off the cliff. Again, note, gang, as we look left right here, look at the rotation. We were bull continuation on the way up. Look how the internal strength right here. So we pull right back to that big mo. IS indicator generates a buy. Retest to the highs. New structure high. Next time back. Turning point black tip buy. New structure high. Higher low. Did not get a signal here. New structure high. Higher low. Turning point black tip buy them. Then our final trade right here. We start to lose momentum. Note the slope of the indicator here. Nice bull market. Look at the slope of the indicator here. This turning point black tip buy around 66. We got a 9 or 10 point move there. Then here we break structure. We make a new structure low. We get our first clue to a possible turn. The big mo goes bearish. Black starts to roll sideways. From this new structure low, lower high. New structure low. Previous swing highs hold. Sell them here. New structure low, lower high. And now gone pecan, bear continuation pattern. So tighten the chart up. Not only have we given back all of the rally for the month of August, but we've gone further. So now I'm going to invert that entire leg. Here's the swing high. This leg down to here, gang, is still active. So I'm going to go from here. I'm going to go left, and I'm going to invert and run my Fibonacci extension on the size of that leg. So you see here we're at 1075. That's the low tick right here. All right, now let's expand the chart and let's focus a little bit more on the right side of the chart right here. From this swing high to this low, we projected our 127s. The 127 at 1093 held right there. Our lows were 1094. So right there, gang, again, remember, here's where we make our new structure low, lower high, okay? Then we took the swing high to this new structure low projected. Our 1414 met our 1618. That held that hourly bar, 
held the next hourly bar, we broke below, closed below, and went right to that 1618 extension. And again, as we just saw across the other indexes, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, the S&P, all holding their Globex swing highs. We traded above here, couldn't close above. In fact, that candle right there, gang, is an outside bearish engulfing lower close. All right, so let's take a look right here. It's an outside bar because the high of the candle traded above the high of the previous, because the low of the candle traded below the low of the prior. It's bearish engulfing because the real body of the candlestick completely engulfs the real body of the prior. And obviously it's lower close. The close of the candle closed below the open and the low of the previous bar. So that's an outside bearish engulfing lower close. Right back down here to where we were trading. So we're coming down to a symmetrical double bottom. We'll take a look at where we are relative to uh, the prior session's gap. All right, let's take a quick look at crude. Okay, so let's tighten. Symmetrical double top. Write it down, three by five card. Keep it in your mind. What do markets look like when they turn? Okay, so what does a turning point look like or end of move? There has to be a move present. We had a bull move. It terminates, that bullish move terminates on a double top. That's the end of that rally. Boom, new structure low, lower high. Retest the low, lower high. Retest the low, gone pecan. So let's go do our Fib analysis. We'll come in here. I'm going to take the swing high to this low right here. This low was the new low that preceded this lower high. 127, 1618, 8831. Market drives to 8817. Okay, now most recently, we want to take a look at the value of this last move lower. Note, this swing high preceded the drop to here. Take the value of that. There's the one-to-one -one measured move. So this is A to B, shallow B to C retracement. Where would A B equal C D? 8850s against the 8830s. Bada bing, bada beautiful. All right, now let's take the value of this leg, swing high to this new structure low. And you'll note the 618 retracement's around 9110 to 9120. A, I've got a swing high here. B, look left, structure relevance here. Previous support, once broken, anticipated resistance. If we get sell signals around the 9114, then there's the conditional statement. If this, then that. If we get a sell signal 9110 to 9120, then. Obviously, if it's a day trade, I'm going to look for plus 18. Extended targets all the way back into the 88, 30s, and 40s. Then if we get a continuation move, obviously, we could go to $87 crude today. All right, let's go look at gold. Gold sideways. Remember, Dave's analysis had us at this big honking 1200 handle. We have not gotten there. DSR owners, right there was your buy signal yesterday morning. Yeah, again, relatively easy, 8 to 10 point move. Buy them again, 8 to 10 point move. Black tip sell right there. This trade right there, gang, is aggressive. We did not get into that DSR level. So we're still looking at basically 25 to 30 on the sell side with targets down at uh, 0705. Counter trend buys, 0506. Pop back up here. Bear trend, Big Mo is downward sloping in black. So a seller up here, I'd look for scalping and then possibly an extended move with 1,200 being the extended target. All right, let's move that bad boy out of there. Russell already rolling over, NASDAQ uh, down slightly. So let's take a look at our gaps. Um, Bought those lows yesterday, traded them up in crude oil gang, and uh, came roaring back from down 2,400 uh, from that big day uh, of the crude over or crude oil rollover. So back in a positive position for the week. 
Uh, let's see here. Let's just grab the thousand tick real quickly. Um, crude oil right here. So you see that I've got a 90.79 uh, high target. So we just talked about 91.10. My 1,000 tick chart, I've got a lot of stuff at 91. All right, so let's go here. All right, so let's see. There's our turning point black tip at the uh, 4014s. Retest here, lows of the day. So we've got a DSR level hanging out down here at 3966. Again, yesterday's bid zone two, beautiful cluster trade. So again, gang, you can note right here the power of this uh, turning point. Boom, new structure lows. Number one, RSI's buried over sold. Two, turning point. Three, black tip. Four, all of that occurred right there within three bars, and it was at my bid zone two yesterday. Beautiful little pop right there, 965 straight north for 30 points. 600 bucks in the NASDAQ. We made a higher, high, higher close right here, and now we've pulled back. So 965, 66s. Aggressive buys. We're going to gap on the open. Let's see what happens on the gap fill. Yeah, and a lot of you have uh, shifted your uh, S&P trading to the 1,000 tick chart. Well done. Yeah, and you're, you're loving it. All right, so there's the uh, S&P. We just moved down into the 34. I missed this, so this would have been a long entry at around 450. Again, when we're counter trend like that, look to take six to eight ticks. Yeah, one and a half to two points and then let the balance run. I'll pull this guy down right here and we'll rally this up right here. Yeah, I've got automation running on that one. Yeah, let's just take a quick look. I want to watch crude here on the thousand tick. Our support and resistance is uh, up and running. The go trade gang is at 90.84, so crude oil has gapped lower. So I'm going to look for buy signals in crude oil for a potential gap fill. Okay, right here. Cluster traders running. This is the counter trend, trade every turn. So you can note my profit target resting at 1083. I'm going to pull that to 8290. If the system is long and my target ends in a zero or a five, I round down to a nine or a four. This 108530 is just fine. I can retest the current highs of the Globex session from 130 and right here at 740 and be out on the second half of the position. My protective stops right here are below the swing lows of the day. As I look left right here, I could put the stops below these lows. That's going to add a full $200 of additional risk. Okay, so I'm going to actually just roll them down here to 77.90, 77.80. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, so NASDAQ 39.77. Again, gang, we closed yesterday. Remember, this one is using real, trim, uh, real trading hours. So 39.83 was yesterday's close. You see that we're slightly below that. So if the NASI rolls down 65.66, I'll look to buy, risk five to six points for a move up to fill that gap. All right, traders, uh, my buddy JB just shot this over, so it's a little uh, freebie from the master. Let me know when you can see that okay. Yeah, so this is, this is higher level stuff. Uh, this is the continuous contract on crude oil. 
Okay, so the numbers might be a little bit off. Continuous contract modifies the rollover, and with crude oil, crude oil we roll um, to the front month once every four weeks. So right now we're trading November, but there are 12 roll periods per year. Okay, so note right here, crude oil continuous contract, this is the daily bar. He starts X down here at 77, X to A at 112.30. Here's AB which is the 50% of XA. Here's BC, which is a 786 of the AB. And then here's where AB equals CD. And we happen to have a 618 at a 127. So you'll note the confluence right here. I'll max it out so you can see the 618 Fibonacci retracement and the 127 Fib extension are landing right on top of each other. And then obviously down here, the 1414 extension, 8450, versus the 786 retracement, 8480. So the bid zone right here, 480s to 760s. We'll see if this pops down into this level. I can look at that on the November contract as well, but beautiful ration confluence right here. The initial target would be the swing high here, pull my Fibonacci retracement down to wherever the swing low is here, and then it'd be a 618 retracement right here. Yeah, so higher time frame, again, this would be good. A, a longer term play on crude. B, maybe buy some USO calls. Yeah, so, um, and then he just mentioned a daily close below 84, and that's the risk. So if we get a daily close below 84 right here, uh, then we're, they're probably going to take out the pattern. Yeah, killer stuff. Crude oil. All right, uh, let's see. A couple of minutes till the open, minute and a half. We've got uh, ADP out uh, prior to our first NFP. We've got three of those bad boys left, so we'll probably see a little bit of uh, sideways stuff. And then, boom, we'll get hit with some uh, numbers. Might slow down in the afternoon session today, gang, in preparation for tomorrow's um, non-farm. Um, still looking for a potential long entry here in uh, crude oil. Now, if crude oil breaks above resistance and then heads to uh, offer zone one, I might look for a pullback entry. Kind of a trend trade there on that 150 tick chart. All right, gang, so mixed bag on the open. Green on top, red below on the uh, S&P 500. Okay, so you see here, not a real significant gap on that NASDAQ. Okay, so we have gapped lower right here, 977 to 83. It's only a six-point gap. Bid zone, 3965 to 67. Uh, and then we'll see if we fill this gap and then roll back over. Crude oil gapping lower. We'll see if we get a pop there. And then down here, gang, um, up nicely on the Russell. I'm going to cover the scalper on my cluster trader. Okay, so the cluster trader got me long down here. We just took half off for about a buck fifty, and now we'll let the balance run. Again, a retest of this double top high. Just some basic structure analysis here. And we say literally, okay, if the market rallies just to retest these highs, then I'm going to hit my second target. So using the ATM, the strategy places the orders. I took the scalper target, pulled it down. We hit the target, and then it automatically cancels the other side, which is the protective stop. Now I can move that uh, protective stop as I want. So I'll come up here to 79.80. We'll reduce the risk to 70 bucks on the balance and then just let it run. We'll either get a reversal sell signal, number two, we'll trail the stop and be stopped on trails, or number three, we'll pop up here and go grab that third target, or second target. Okay, now my momentum trader up here on the top left, I've got this running from my uh, Ninja Trader control center. 
I put it on on the strategies tab. So the strategies running over there, I've got my chart trader set up right here. Okay, so this is a momentum buy signal. Now, while that guy's rolling back over, let's do that. You'll see here that my counter trend trader, my trade every turn, just got me short. Okay, so my 107880, I'm going to roll this up to 910 so that if we come back down and retest these lows, I'll hit my scalping contract target. I'm going to pop this up just a little bit. I'm going to go to 410 and 380, so I'm above this swing high here. Yeah, and now, so you see the momentum trader got long, so I've got these running in two different accounts. Very aggressive targets on the momentum trader. Yeah, this guy's designed to literally just get in. If we get a momentum move, go, and if not, we want to be stopped out on trails quickly. So right there, just a four tick uh, loss on that one. It's about 45% accurate. So what happens is typically, gang, we take um, a couple of small losses, and then we'll catch one big directional momentum move. And obviously, we can modify all those numbers. All right, NASDAQ rallying up to fill the gaps. Still no long entry in crude oil, so we'll be patient there. Yeah, gang, and then what we'll do is we'll update our uh, the VPT options, uh, the options positions as well here shortly. Rod's having a little issue with... Uh, with some software, and then he'll be in. Um, counter trend over here, so we're one for one and one on the counter trend model. Stop a little too tight there on the scalper, so I'm going to go modify my momentum trade slightly and widen that uh, stop up. A little bit wider stop and we'd still be long. Gang, I updated the parameters over here, so you'll note right here, uh, much uh, wider stops. So I'm going to allow the strategy to run a little bit. The momentum trader just got me long again. Uh, target one hit, so we'll take 100 bucks on the uh, scalper there in the mini Russell. And then I'm going to let this one run. We'll rally these targets up. So we just pulled 100 out. Now uh, stops are in. And then we can go grab here real quickly the 1,000 tick. And let's look at the TF over here. Just identify key price points right there on the mini Russell. All right, so there's our Russell analysis. Came in just shy of the 1618 yesterday. Beautiful DSR level. So right now we're going to be battling this resistance at around 1087. If we break above, close above, then we could get a nice rally. So I'm going to move my extended target all the way up here to 1093s based on that DSR level. Okay, so it could be a real nice directional move. Again, see that structure resistance right there on that 1,000 tick chart? That's the recent swing high that we've got to deal with. If we can break above this, close above this, then we could make a move to this 1093.95. Yeah, so long entries at 450. We just put 100 bucks in the bank, and you can see there that the protective stop just constantly updating. So what I've got is I set it to trail my fib dots, so the strategy automatically calculates the fib dots and then trails it one tick off of the fib dots. So if I wanted to allow for more um, interaction with the trader, then I would widen my trail stop based on the strategy and then just let it run.
Okay, today we've got um, offer zone one at $90 uh, on crude oil. Crude oil finally did roll over yesterday. You know, we got short up there at those levels. We popped up to the OZ2. Yeah, let's take a quick look here. Yesterday, prior to that massive sell-off, Okay, so let's look left right here. There was our sell-off. So right here, we made this drive to new structure lows. So we broke above. Remember, I sold OZ2 right there. We sold them here first, profited here. We talked about the long entry here. I did not take that. I left my limit orders resting there, sold them. And this was my momentum uh, ATM. So this one risks 15 to make 22. So I got short, went right in my face, stopped me out there, continued the rally. And again, gang, this is pretty unusual that we hit these levels, but they're really nice trades. So when we rallied right here to OZ3, we go overbought, higher, low, bearish divergence. I sold them right here, rolled over, took partial, sold them again here, and then was short right there, took profit, sold them again here, I did not catch that entire move right there, but that's where I pulled back the majority of the profits that I gave back on that big massive sell-off uh, Tuesday. So you can see this guy rolled all the way back over from our offer zone three at 92.90. Offer zone three caught the highs of the day within about uh, six ticks. So 92.96 was the high. I kept taking profits at offer zone two. And then this final one right here, once we gave way, 250. We go straight south right here to 160, 90 cents in about 17 minutes. Another big massive move. And then you can see we put in a beautiful double bottom at bid zone one and then popped from there. Yeah, uh, offer zone three and bid zone three are extremes. That's why I love to trade them. So if, if you imagine a, a great visual that's always worked well in my training is just imagine that rubber band. The rubber band is stretched about as tight as it can go. And then there's mean reversion. We revert back to the middle. Good morning, Jack. Welcome. All right, turning point up here, possible black tip sell coming in the uh, Russell. And then again, right here, gang, we've traded through. So you see my momentum trader in the top left has got a buy signal right there. All right, crude oil, new structure highs. Still haven't gotten a great uh, setup or signal here. Remember, crude oil's gapped lower. We'll see if we go fill that gap. Now on crude, basic rule, if we break above resistance and do not hit OZ1, then I look to buy the first pullback to the midpoint. So there's a perfect example. Now if we go straight to OZ1, then obviously that cancels the trade. So you can see we're going to break above resistance, probably go straight to OZ1. And then we'll see if we pull back. So long entry is around 89.50. And again, we still got room to run here to go fill that gap. Go trade it around 90.85. So anything into that 90.85 to 91, and we can look for uh, counter trend sell signals. So there we go, straight through resistance, straight to offer zone one in crude, a nice little 30 tick move. Uh, and then a question right there about um, testing this. I do have a strategy that basically buys a break above, but stops have to be below the recent swing lows. So for example, a close above resistance, buy next bar market, then we have stops below the prior swing low. Target one is OZ1, target two is OZ2, and then we have a with trend counter trend filter. Yeah, it does all right. It's just that it takes, you know, it'll take some larger drawdowns because of the size. So you got to be prepared for that. NASDAQ can't gain any legs, man.
Yeah, my black tip should be short. Don't know why it isn't. All right, NASDAQ traders, again, remember, we want to watch this uh, 65 handle. Okay, NASDAQ right here in the middle, we're breaking below support. We're going to retest the lows right here pre-market. So as we trade below support, we've got a relatively tight opening range, about 10 points there in the NASI. So if we pop back up here, we've already filled our gap. So gap trade uh, target hit. And now if we pop back up after this break below, we're going to look for our bid zone one down here. Yeah, still dynamic. All right, traders, uh, crude all over here. Note right here, we just popped to OZ2. So let's look for double tops right here against the uh, 90 40 handle. Our swing high there is at 38. So if we get double tops right here, we'll look for a qualified sell signal. Again, this is counter to the gap fill trade. So we still haven't filled the gap. Market rallying right there. We've got a color rotation. On any shorts from OZ2, going to look for. 10 to 15 ticks on target one, and then a pullback down to 89.80 would be the second uh, target. Yeah, and uh, up here, stops only need to be, uh, you know, 15 ticks is plenty. If we take out OZ2, trade above, close above, we're likely to continue. Uh, and again, OZ3 and the go trade up here within about uh, 20 cents of each other. So there's nice symmetry right there, double top. I'm going to do an adverse excursion sell right here. Symmetrical double top. I'm going to sell a break below right here, looking for a quick move. All right. Uh, momentum trades long over here on the Russell top left. All right, gang, mini Russell there, 1087. So again, the 1,000 tick chart, we're at a key price point right here. We get a trade above, close above. Momentum trade, again, looking for a move possibly back to that 94, 95 zone in the mini Russell. That's that DSR level hanging out right here, which was the final swing high yesterday prior to that last move lower. So here's a higher high, higher close. Okay, momentum trade right there is long, so we're going to cover partial right there for about a buck sixty, and then let the balance run. Now again, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to manually move this up based on my analysis with the DSR levels, and then just continue to trail the stop on the momentum signal right here. So now I'm going to pull this into uh, 87. You see it automatically popped up based on my fib dots. So the logic here is if target one is hit, then trail the stop based on what? And we're using the fib dots right there, one of our uh, trading indicators. Marius wrote that into the strategy. It just looks at the value of that, adds or subtracts based on what I've told it to do, and goes from there. OZ2 on crude all over there, nice double tops at 90.38. Still no rollover. Yeah, if you sold the 38s, then you're looking for target one. All right, traders, uh, momentum trade out near break even. Okay, so uh, 87 to 88.60, so $160 on partial, and then 87 to 87.10 on the stop loss, 
uh, 10 bucks on the balance. So that covered commissions basically. Wow, very nice. Well done. Max just finished the day. It's about time you finished a little early there, bud. Brickwick, nine by one trade. Took $1,000, crude oil, two contracts on that move, 470 in the Russell, 370 on gold. Well done. Well done. So, yeah, you caught this rally in crude oil right there for the gap fill. Nice job. Now, uh, DST traders right there, there's your double top sell, 37s. Okay, so, again, your target one's been attained. Counter trend sell. Now see if we get a pullback down into this 89.80 level. Mini Russell there, key price point, 1088 handle. We've got a turning point right here on the 1,000 tick chart. Could get a black tip sell right into that big mo. Again, we're in a big bear move right here. Made slightly higher highs here with a higher close. Watch for a black tip sell and then a possible move back into our 77s. S&P 500, let's go take a quick look on the 1,000 tick, a quick update. Okay, just shy. So that 1943.75 handle, nice area of um, resistance. If we pop back into that zone, you see, gang, that we're basically rolling sideways now between our DSR levels. So we've got... Dynamic resistance here, basically 43 half 44. We did pop right there. On this 1,000 tick chart, we're going to want to use probably three-point stops, four-point stops. Okay, so right there from my, the strategy got me long here at 38s. Again, I should have had this guy down. We'll go ahead and go 175 here, and then we'll look for a pop to 1950 if we go. Quick update on the NASDAQ. Yeah, so NASI, now you see we've got a 4,000 tick DSR level. So that's a dynamic resistance zone, 93 to 95. If we pop back up in here and get a qualified sell, that's a sell with trend. Targeting, 71s, and then obviously potential new structure lows. So NASDAQ traders on the sell side, 92.93s with a qualified signal, 20 points of opportunity back down into the 70 to 71 zone, and then obviously potential new structure lows. Yeah, gap's already filled, so no longer a consideration. Wasn't a big gap at uh, six points from the open to uh, prior sessions close. Factory orders in 30 seconds. Thanks for the reminder, Vince. Factory orders coming out, gang, at 9. And then again, we've got uh, inventory numbers at 9.30. Nat gas. Could see crude oil move. Factory orders down 10.1%. Hello. All right, gang. So index is rolling over a little bit uh, on the news. Yen's down, euro's up. 
Our uh, momentum trader's already got a short up here, top left-hand side. So if we get a rollover, we could see a nice decline. So again, gang, right here, all I do is I just pull down the 1,000 tick, left-click here, go grab my mini Russell, and then I want to find out where's the market relative to. So you'll note right here, we're getting that qualified sell signal. So very quick analysis shows me, hey, if this market goes lower, again, could be news driven, whatever, then what's a reasonable expectation? Well, back down into 77, 78. That's based on my higher time frame. All right, grab this, pop it back up here. So based on that, I'm going to come down here pull that uh, extended target all the way down. Now again, this 100 tick chart is erratic, so obviously it can move a lot inside of that. But the momentum trade tends to give us better entry signals on the shorter time frames. So just using my higher time frame analysis to uh, identify a potential extended target for that current short position. All right, traders, uh, mini Russell here, new structure lows on the momentum trade. I'm going to pull my stops in on the scalper. All right, traders, uh, here's the momentum trade. So we just hit target one there for about 220, up 260 on our open position right there. And you can watch that sell stop now, which is buy to cover. So that's a stop for protection. Now, again, as you look left right here, this is the smaller time frame on the 100 tick. So you see we've got resistance at 84s, became support, support here. We caught this momentum move here. We just got short right here, and now if we can break this 83, 50, 84 level, we should get another nice move potentially back into the 920s. So my extended target down here is based on A, my higher time frame, the 1,000 tick, and then B, I can look left right here and see that market structure. Okay, so this stop right here is trailing based on the value of the fib dots. They're just buried, obviously, in the strategy. So now this is automatic. I don't have to think about it anymore unless I want to manually modify it, but it'll just trail the market as we go lower. We're locked in right now to another 80 bucks in this trade, so around 300, 320 uh, gross. Yeah, so I'll just let that run up here. Now, again, we could get a reversal signal, but on the momentum trade, it's less likely. All right, crude oil over here. We've rolled over a little bit. I'm going to take my scalper off for a quick 50 bucks. Stay short one lot. Those of you still short on the uh, crude oil trade, opportunity to trail stops. And those of you that are new, uh, gang, are fib dots. Uh, it's a volatility-based indicator. We call it the fib dots because uh, it's based on some Fibonacci analysis here and base volatility. Similar to a parabolic SAR, kind of like a chandelier stop you may have seen. So when we're long, stops trail below the blue. If we're short, stops trail above the red. So right there, we just took 50 or 60 bucks. There's our symmetrical double top at our offer zone two. Nice short entry. Okay, so now I'll come down, get more aggressive. We'll go 16s. 
and we'll see if we can come down to that 8977. Now again, I want you to note down here, RSI is completely buried. Because of that, I'm going to get more aggressive on my trail stops. When that RSI buries itself, it doesn't mean we won't go lower, but I do want to get more aggressive. Look at that. RSI is at 6 right now, traders. Buried at 6. So right now, there we go. So 996 out on the balance. Again, the reason for that more aggressive trail stop, that RSI, rarely does that RSI go above 93 or below 7. So when we see that below 7, I want to get real aggressive. So that's a little 320 or 340 winner there on the crude oil. Well done, gang. Yeah, that OZ2. Uh, so again, that's the first test of OZ2. Yesterday, our first test made money. Our second test lost money. Remember, our bid zone 2 was the low of the day in the NASDAQ. Look at crude oil. All right, there's your target. Okay, so there's your SOS4 sell. It offers zone 2. Target 1, it's counter trend, so get aggressive. Get 10 to 15 ticks. And then right down here, we talked about the resistance being the secondary target. 8980s, that low tick right there is 82. Yeah, so if your limit orders are resting down there, I love uh, that exit right there. Yeah, we had a NASDAQ swing trade on. I took that one off as well. Um, little rally right here on uh, the Mini Russell. Stops at 580 still. So if we roll back over, those stops will trail. NASDAQ still sideways, hanging out inside of the 72 to 87 handle. Okay, so we've got about a 15-point range. And then crude oil traders, we still haven't filled the gap. So once we pull back here, we'll see if we get a turning point black tip buy signal and then a potential move back to offer zone two. All right, gang, uh, new structure lows in the Russell. So again, the Russell momentum signal is short over here. Notice the stop has trailed. So we're at 480 right now, locking in 180 on the second half. We've taken out that 84 support level. Right here, we've got new structure lows, okay? So again, we're looking for the decline down into that structure support. The analysis we did right over here on our 1,000 tick chart is showing us that it's reasonable for this thing to go to 77s. You see the stop trailing right there, auto trade. And again, this is a good directional move, obviously. So we've had basically 79s to 89, a 10-point move higher. Okay, we had uh, two winners and a loser there. And then obviously we stopped. We got our momentum sell signal right here, and this is going to turn into a nice winner for us. Yeah, so now it's just about letting it run uh, with that trail stop intact. That's right. Uh, middle, back down to the 972. So again, NASDAQ just rolling completely sideways. Let's come here and let's go take a look. S&P's probably rolled over. Yeah, I don't know if we popped uh, significantly enough there to get that uh, scalper target. No, nope, did not. So we retested that level. I'll just leave this on. This is another strategy on a different chart. S&P traders, nice big uh, level down here at that 1934, 34 half. So you can see, gang, a very clearly established 10-point sideways trade with a bearish bias. All right, so remember, two days ago we had the gap. We had the beautiful buy signal, about 35 points in the S&P, just trading the DSR levels. Yesterday afternoon, late in the day, we had the sell signal here. Okay, and then early this morning, beautiful sell signal here. Moved about one and a half points against us before rolling back over here. And then there's the buy right there prior to the gap fill. Market pops, fills the gap, and then is rolling over. So 34 to 35, watch for buy signals. Yeah, that's the 1,000 tick. All 
All right, crude oil finding support down there, gang, at the resistance zone, uh, back into the 975s. Yeah, any long entries there, we'd look at a retest of the offer zone two and then potential new highs. Nat gas numbers out at 930, 930. We just checked the options position. Rob's uh, Rod should be in here in about 15 to 30 minutes. Um, down slightly, we bought those IWM calls for October. Spider calls, we bought Apple calls. Down a little bit, but we bought ourselves some, some time uh, with the October options. All right, NASDAQ hanging on the ledge right here. Dow Jones took out our previous lows, made new structure lows. Here's the NASI on the December contract. Okay, so NASDAQ down here, gang, testing some pretty significant levels. So again, I've got an interest in the 965s. We bought these yesterday, took partials, bought them again, and I just covered the balance. So I'm all flat in one of our accounts on that NASI. We'll see if we can bid them back up at 65, 66. Again, got to have a qualified signal down there. I'll pull the Dow 150 tick down here for you. New structure lows, top left-hand side, strategies trailing the stop on the Russell. Okay, Catherine, perfect. Aha, I pulled in the 10 year notes instead of the Dow Jones. No wonder. Yeah, it's one thing I've never understood. How in the world? When I go to edit an indicator, does that part of the indicator uh, display pop up out of the chart? It, it literally resides below the chart in no man's land. I didn't think that was possible. All right, so gang, right down here in the middle, Dow much lighter volume in the Dow Jones, so I'm on a 150 tick in the bottom. Again, complete sideways trade, 685 to 730s, contained by my support and resistance levels. We rallied off the open, went, filled 90% of the gap, not quite all the way. So right now, I just got nothing to do in the, uh, in the Dow. All right, traders, Mini Russell, top left, new structure lows. We've watched this stop trail from uh, just above the entry position all the way down now to 83.20. So our entry at 660 to 320, that's uh, what? $340 locked in. We're getting closer to our extended target. NASDAQ into our dynamic support zones. Russell continues to just fade a little bit. Yeah, so if at any time, if I want to exit, A, I left click, pull my limit order to uh, cover above price. B, I can take my stop, pull it down below price, or C, I can left click close. I don't hit the close button because then that shuts the strategy off and I have to go turn the strategy back on to get into the next position. All right, gang, so right over here on the Russell. Now we'll see if we get another qualified setup, but again, you'll see the sell signal here at 86.60. Right here, 240 out on uh, uh, 84.20 for the scalper. Then the trail stop kicks in, balance out at 83 even right here for 360. So really nice trade right there. That brings us to around 1000 bucks for the session so far. Crude oil traders right here. There was the buy signal right there. Again, we go oversold, 
There's your color rotation if you got long. I didn't take the long entry. Still looking for a retest of this one and then possibly off to new structure highs. Okay, my strategy over here caught it. I'm testing this right now in a SIM account. So this thing got me long based on my brick wicks and just took profits right there. So, so far I've had two trades. Uh, one entry right here at 90.20. I start this thing at 8.30, so I missed the buy signal here. So at 8.30, long entry there, basically covered commissions, one tick, 10 bucks, no big deal. I've got the width trend only filter set up. And so we bought them right here at 9.18 and just took it off right there. So that was about 24 ticks, 240 bucks. And right now I'm just looking at single contracts. Yeah, that's exactly right. So just single contracts and only with trend. Last 20 days right here, four grand. Majority of it you can see on the sell side as we caught those two big momentum moves, profited from those. 76 trades, 54% accurate. So we've got to take this, pull out about 750 minimum for commissions, brings us down around three grand over that period. So DST owners, more to come on that. Maris is uh, in uh, overtime working uh, on strategies. Yeah, and that's the same bar that um, Max was trading. So th this right here, you can see if he turns it on earlier. So, for example, here was a buy signal right at 830. But mine didn't get that because of time that we start. So this would have been a winner here. This signal still would have popped. That would have been a one tick winner. Then we pull back right here. Now, the strategy would have generated a sell signal if I had it set to trade every turn. The problem with the trade every turn is not these beautiful moves, but it's this right here, Okay, where we go non-directional with the market. We lose momentum after one of those big moves. Yeah, so we've built a couple of filters in. So basically, uh, on my side, because of my start time, two trades, two winners, one small, one nice. Uh, and then again, there we go. Look at that. We just popped right there. So now we're going to go probably fill the gap in crude oil. We'll watch for short signals around that OZ3 level. So a second contract right here, this is a multi-contract strategy, would still be long. And then the blue right there sets at 90.42. So my stops would come in at 39 on the balance. So from this 89.96, that'd be locked into 390, about $430. And then obviously, if we go all the way to OZ3, I just cover them at market. But that's what allows us to pick those bigger moves. All right, so there's uh, OZ2 taken out. So again, we took our first sell at OZ2 winner. We talked about a retest of resistance for the extended targets. And then right here, we got buried RSI. There's our color rotation. And then off to new structure highs. Yeah, so a couple of you took that trade. Well done. Targeting OZ2. And now finally, a potential move to that 9084. So if we get up to the 84 handle, let's watch for sell signals back into a counter trend mode. Let's go here on this bad boy. And let's take a look at crude oil. CL 1114 on the 1000 tick chart. Where are we relative to our 1,000 uh, tick DSR levels? Okay, so remember, we talked about that 91 handle. My rule of projection high target comes in around 90.80. We're approaching that for the day. OZ3 is up here. I've got a big DSR level up here based on this test right there. That was the last high before we rolled over. Yeah, so you can see yesterday, remember, gang, I've been teaching you about rules of projection. There's my rule of projection low yesterday. So right here is where that rule of projection low set. So as the market was trading at 284, rule of projection saying, look, if we do roll over, then our projected target would be down here at 9050. So 80% of the time, the market will be contained by these blue and red lines. So we rolled over, went right to that low target, stopped. And then right here, early in the morning, 2 o'clock, we take those lows out. 
So now we've got new high targets. So again, we've got a 20 cent range here, this 90, 80 to 91. But again, still gang, I wanna make sure I get a qualified signal. 